Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to cover the latest team of the week in NHL 21. But before I do that, I have to remind you guys today at 3 p.m. Eastern Time uh, on the NHL, EA Sports NHL Twitch channel, myself and Paul Bissonnette, yes, Biz Nasty, will be hosting uh, the NHL 21 Hut All Stars event. A little fun broadcast to help promote, uh, you know, the latest All Star event that'll be happening in NHL 21. So don't forget. To check that out a little bit later on today. Also, guys, don't forget this weekend, starting today, my G Fuel code, code no sleeves on gfuel.com, will save you 30% off your entire order. So if you are looking to, um, you know, maybe restock or check out G Fuel today, this weekend would be the time to do it. Again, my code no sleeves will save you 30% off your entire order. All right, let's get into the latest team of the week. All right, so we'll kick things off with the 91 Jake Gensel with Wingman and Gladiator on this card. And again, the lower 90 overall cards, you kind of want to see, um, you know, higher end speed, but 989 is fine. Um, uh, again, with wingman, one of my favorite synergies, in my opinion, just player based ones, uh, just especially for wingers because of what they do, because of what it, you know, puts on acceleration and wrist shot accuracy passing, you know, that's, that's fine as well, but nothing really crucial there. Uh, but that means his acceleration can get to 95 and his speed is up to 92 shots all up in the mid nineties with that wrist shot accuracy getting up to 98, which is obviously fantastic. And then his hand stats all in the mid-90s as well. This is a really nice card. Um, and again, for those guys that can't afford the master set items, uh, you know, maybe the new McDavid or anything like that, um, you know, this is a fine uh, solution or option for you and uh, a really good one in my opinion. Next up, we've got the 90 Mika Zabinijad with Thief and Wingman. Even with Thief on this card, it just doesn't he doesn't have a high enough faceoff rating and again uh something over the summer that i'm going to be doing for the next game a uh, big big stance i'm going to take in terms of hockey ultimate team is that every center starts with at least 80 faceoff rating um in the next game because it is just a mess that centermen can't uh, play center in this game because of their face-off rating. So Thief isn't bad, but it doesn't do enough on this card. Uh, and again, with Wingman, it's not bad, again, because you're going to play him on the wing. 88, he is bigger, though, I will say that. So this is kind of the player, the size of the player that I enjoy using because I, you know, control time on attack, things like that a little bit more. Speed's only 91, acceleration again up to 95. He's going to play a lot like Jerome Ginla, if you guys remember back to the franchise grade event. And again, not a lot of players enjoyed his play style. But nonetheless, he is pretty good. I would probably uh, look elsewhere though for the majority of the player base because he isn't going to feel as fast then we've got the 94 nathan mckinnon and if you aren't a big fan of mika zibinjad's play style nathan mckinnon is the opposite he is uh, all run and gun and even again thief just kind of a useless synergy for him you can't play him at center which is a mess because nathan mckinnon is one of the better ones uh, shut down on this card does help out quite a bit because it does get his body checking up to 91 um, and his stick checking up to 95 with um, well with thief activated but again not one not everyone is going to activate that being said his shot is in the high 90s hand stats are almost perfect in my opinion this is an end game card for a lot of players like you could have him on your fourth line for the rest of the game and not really notice a lot the one thing I will say that I say with all Nathan McKinnon cards is that he plays he doesn't usually play what his stats indicate he should play like um but if you look at his card outside of synergies this is basically the steven stamko's master item so um he is going to be a phenomenal card in my opinion but uh yeah every nathan mckinnon card of you is just underwhelming but you know 96 speed 97 acceleration with team synergies and high 90 shot this is what you're looking for in a winger then we've got 89 Kyle Connor with Howitzer and Light the Lamp. Um, you know, Light the Lamp, obviously, if you have Wayne Gretzky, a little bit easier to activate. And then Howitzer, Kyle Connor has had been a really good card even since like the launch of the game because most of the cards I believe have had Howitzer. Um, but obviously, that means his speed can get up to 92. His acceleration is only 90, though. But his shot is in the high 90s with these synergies activated. And for anyone that is uh, maybe started the game late or, you know, you can't afford the huge upgrades, these are the kind of cards you want to look for, the ones that have um, multiple player-based synergies that can actually help increase the card itself. Um, so a, a really good option for anyone that, you know, can't afford those big master items, uh, the left-handed guys. Then we've got the 89 Adam Henrique with Thief and Workhorse. And Thief on this card does matter because uh, he can't get up to 91 faceoffs, and that's fine. Like, you could have him as a, you know, a lower-end centerman with Workhorse. Again, one of my favorite synergies as well um, is a really good option. Speed can get to 90, 92, or sorry, 91. Um, but for centerman, it's not all that crucial. His shot is okay. Hand stats okay. Uh, it's really going to matter and depend if you have Thief. If you have Thief activated, um, you could probably pick up this card, and he's probably going to be relatively cheaper than some other options, but he could be a really valuable centerman uh, that you use in your bottom pair uh you know for penalty kill and stuff like that 
Then we've got the 88 Pavel Buchnevich with Magician and Gladiator. Magician on this card uh, does significantly help him out because his agility, deking, and puck control only start at 90. Um, so getting them up higher obviously will drastically increase his feel when you're doing dekes and half spins. Gladiator, um, you know, it's okay. I don't think, again, you're not going to bump. I mean, he is six foot one, so he's not small. Um, it can help out with this card because he is going to play a little bit uh, weaker, I will say. Or I don't know the best way to say that. Um, you know, a little bit uh, less aggressive, I guess, with the bumps and whatnot. But you have to remember his speed's only going to get to 90, acceleration 91. Again, the reason why I say um, that you want to be careful with these cards is it's all going to depend on your play style. A lot of the guys, uh, you know, I see some, you know, comments about how you don't just need speed on the wings i totally agree man if you look at my my team i have a end game team but some of the you know some of the bigger guys i've liked throughout this year have had lower speed um it, it's all going to depend on how you play um so it's uh, that's that's going to be have to be on you if you want to look out to grab this card but he is he is a good card especially if you have magician activated then you've got the 85 yanni gord with light the lamp and wingman activated I would probably avoid this card even if you are just first starting out. Um, there are better options for you, and uh, he just isn't going to do enough. So pass from here on the Yanni Gord. Then we've got the 83, or the 83 Kelly Youngcroak with Howitzer and Gladiator. And if you're just starting the game, this is the kind of card you want to look out for. Again, his speed can get up to 92 right off the rip. Um, if you have Spark, 90 acceleration. And his shot, um, you know, shot, slap shot powers up to 92 uh, with Gladiator on. But it's this is strictly, you just started your team maybe a couple weeks ago. This might be a decent option for you. And then we've got the 81 Trevor Moore with Workhorse and Wingman. Uh, his speed can only get up to 86, so this is a pass for me. At a certain point, it's just too slow, especially if he's 5'10". And the 79 Jonathan Dolan with Spark and Wingman. You might be able to use him for synergies, but his speed, again, is only um, 86 with Distributor, so pass for me there. And then the 81 Dennis Malgan with Thief and uh, Speedster. Speedster obviously makes him a little bit more relevant because his speed can't get up to 92. Uh, but again, maybe if you're just first starting the game, this could be a decent card on the real cheap that, you know, speed is really important early on. Um, so that might be the only way there. And then lastly, we've got the 80 AT Oxen in with Distributor and Speedster. Everything else is just way too low. So hard pass here. Great synergy combo, but no chance. Moving on to defense, we've got the 95 Victor Hedman with Heart and Soul and Magician. Obviously, Heart and Soul isn't one we're really looking for, and it really wouldn't do anything for him anyways. Uh, Magician is important on this card. Again, um, you know, Victor Hedman does play a little bit more stiff, but he is one of the best um, in terms of defense. Uh, so with Magician, I actually really enjoy that this synergy is on this card because, like I said, he does play a little bit stiffer. But an end game card. His size, you can't, you can't uh, put attributes to that. Uh, his speed can get over ninety. Acceleration can over ninety. His slap shot is in a nice spot now. And defensively, all of his defensive stats are perfect, especially when you consider the fact he's six foot six. This is an end game card. If you were able to get this ninety five Victor Hedman, if you aren't able to get his team of the year, this is an incredible card. Then we've got the 92 Seth Jones, same kind of situation, uh, just on the right-hand side. Uh, Endgame size, his shot is good. Um, I'm not a fan of his synergies at all, um, but uh, again, any of the Seth Jones card now going forward, they are going to be really good. If you can't afford the Dougie Hamilton, this is a nice substitute because, again, you want these gigantic defensemen. The, the value they bring when defending the blue line and bumping guys off the puck in your own zone once they've started the cycle is super valuable, guys, and uh, you know if they have a slap shot that's half decent in the mid-90s, that's just going to give you an offensive output with them as well. Next up, we've got the 89 Josh Morrissey with passing playmaker and wingman. Um, you know, does they're not? He's not bad. Uh, just kind of ho hum with six foot, but he does have 90 body checking. A uh, wingman and passing playmaker, same thing. I'm not a huge fan of passing playmaker, but speed can get to 90, acceleration 94, and his shot is all around the 90s as well. But he is going to play stiff, and he's not that big, um, so not a huge fan. But again, I think there might be value here. Then we've got the 88 Justin Schultz with shut down and passing playmaker 6-2. Uh, same kind of thing. If you can't afford the 92 set Jones, this would be a nice alternative to that. So if you are just looking to upgrade some of your defensemen, um, maybe maybe you're stuck with like the base Drew Doughty or, or Eric Carlson, this would be a nice upgrade because he does have decent speed and his shot is good if you can get shut down activated and he's big. So uh, a nice card here in the 88 Justin Schultz. Moving on to the 81 Cole Clayton with workhorse and speedster. I mean, very early on, if you have team-based synergies, maybe because he can get to 88 speed, but no, I'm not a huge fan of this, even for the synergy boost. Uh, just 71 accuracy on the shot. He's going to miss the entire rink. And then the 81 at Lucas Cormier with shutdown passing. Playmaker is usable in the sense that he can get 88 speed and 88, 89 acceleration. 
if you can get shut down and passing playmaker activated, his slap shot isn't awful, but he's five foot ten with 79 body checking. Complete liability in his own zone. Hard pass for me. And then lastly in net, we've got the idiot Thatcher Demko. Demko cards have been really good this year. Swarm and Distributor is a great synergy combo. You combine that with the fact he's got 74 aggression. The 89 glove high is a little low, but this could be a really nice card. Again, if you try out this Thatcher Demko, let me know in the comments section because, again, I don't get to try out all these goaltenders, but this is a really good option. Then we've got the 78 Alex Dubow with Barrage and Heart and Soul. Pure synergy thing, and the synergies aren't that great, so pass for me there. And then lastly, we've got the NHL Moments 88 Ryan Kessler. Like I said, uh, as a Sharks fan, I cannot stand Ryan Kessler, uh, but there's no denying he was a great hockey player. Two to Barrage is a great synergy boost, as well as two to Speedster. 94 on the draw. He has always been one of the better centermen in hockey ultimate team. I will say this, like he's 6'2", which is fine. Acceleration can get to 89 with with Spark. This is a good centerman card. Like, again, I've said throughout the entire year that you don't need extremely fast centermen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, th this would be a nice option. And we'll see what he's going for in the auction house. Again, these cards have been kind of expensive because of the limited release on them. Like, 125, not terrible. Again, 94 faceoffs is extremely valuable. Two to Barrage is awesome. So is two to Speedster. Um, I think there's value here. That's not a bad, ter that's not a terrible buy at all. And then lastly, guys, we'll rip my packs uh, for Rivals. I took the Untradeable just for the content. I wouldn't recommend you taking Untradeable unless you're trying to make Taves or a Ginla. Um, but yeah, we'll see what we got. Last time we got uh, the 91 Rob Blake. We've gotten a couple icons recently, but uh, you know, still good for make gold collectibles, especially with the events coming up as we're slowly getting into the end game, like the, the end of the year. Um, you know, team of the season, I don't... Okay, that kind of sucks. Uh, all right, that's a tough L, but nonetheless, here we go. We got the 88 Pavel Bijanovic. Nice Sharks Uni. And okay, that's my first L I've taken, taking untradables in a while. But nonetheless, not terrible. All right, moving on to the next one. Man, my pack luck has actually been pretty good recently. Like I said, I've gotten multiple icons the last few weeks. Uh, two Krejci, Fox. As we move along here. And, but yeah, like I said, you know, you've got a lot, taking on tradable, I still would never recommend to my viewers just because at this point, unless you are trying to make that, you know, that, that Taves, obviously, um, you know, just not worth it. You might as well, uh, at this stage of the game, try and get the big pull and make a lot of coins off of them instead of, you know, but if you want to take, uh, untradables to try and make gold or icon collectibles, obviously there's a lot of, this, the golds are starting to come out, so you know, um, that's just, uh, you know, always good to have a lot more cards to trade in, but you do run the risk of pulling the, you know, the high eighties, low nineties team of the weeks or whatever. And, uh, obviously not, uh, not ideal there with the Bunevich pull, uh, not seeing anything here. Okay. All right. Next up. And okay. Last one. We'll do a skip pack. No dots. All right. So we're all right here. Dude, Taylor Hall, talk about just man, Buffalo. Living in Southern Ontario, man, I've had an uh, you know, I've liked Buffalo for a long time, and man, it's just sad to see what's happening with them. All right, guys, so that is gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I will see you later on today on the EA Sports NHL Twitch channel. Again, hosted with myself and Paul Bisonette. Have a good one, guys.